Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. The Bible says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It's a verse that is part of the Beatitudes. It says that there's a blessing that each and every person can have. But it's based upon our hunger and thirst. Our hunger and thirst. I want to speak to you this morning about the dynamics of desire. The dynamics of desire. God, I thank you for every person that is here this morning. Thank you, Lord, for every heart, every desire, God, that is in each person's heart this morning. That has come into this house. And I'm praying, God, over the next few minutes uh, that you captivate us right now by your word, and allow it to take up residence in our heart. And God, minister to us through your word, I pray. And I ask it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. Desire's quite an interesting thing. Um, we don't realize, but it's part of our everyday life. Some people have a huge desire each morning just to have their coffee. <laughs> and if that desire is not met, things may um, take a turn for the worst. <laughs> people desire things like good weather, good jobs, great day, an easy day at work. People desire a day off. People desire gifts on their birthday. Some people desire people not to remember their birthday. <laughs> Our whole life really is focused around things that we desire, isn't it? People desire certain types of cars. They let you know when you don't have one of those, that you've made the wrong desire. Every part. You desired, hopefully, to come to church this morning. Everybody has different desires. I want to speak to you this morning about the dynamic of desire. Desire covers a wide range of human wants. Emotions, cravings. It can des describe natural desires, which would include things like hunger for food or, or desire for God. It can des describe unnatural desires or cravings, which include such things as greed or, or even lust. On a few occasions, you can see in Scripture that desires are actually ascribed to God. And how he desires his people. And, Amen. and there's such a longing for a connection right. to his creation. But most of the time in scripture, the, the definition, the, the passages that are set aside for desire are ascribed to men, mankind. These desires come under uh, a scrutiny of God. Because he knows, according to scripture... Even the desires of our heart. The Old Testament uses different words for desire. Words that are attached to love. And how that is and can be a desire. Things that people delight in. Maybe that are their desires. Self or soul or appetite, things that maybe are really even selfish, but they're still desires of each person. It speaks also about a desire or a longing that somebody can have. But this morning I'm going to focus on the meaning of desire that you yearn for or you long for. That part of desire that affects you as a Christian, as a child of God, that goes way beyond just 
the ordinary or the status quo. Right. The New Testament, it uses the idea of desire in many passages as well. And it speaks about a person's will. Over 208 times that term is of what or willing or desire is used in the New Testament. And you can see throughout the New Testament different passages that even deal with desire in a negative way. And how it comes across as wrath or fierceness or indignation. Lots of examples, positive and negative, in Scripture concerning desire. <clears throat> but in the Old Testament, human desires were viewed as something greater or even more powerful than just the natural. Desire was a subject to the obedience of the will of God. Right. Something that went deeper into a person than just a want or a craving. Right. The one who knew that true, true fulfillment of desire is the person who puts all of their reliance or trust in God. That final desire is, I'm going to put it in the Lord himself. That's why Solomon wrote in Proverbs chapter 3 and said, in verse 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all of thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. He will fulfill the desires if it's a desire after him. Amen. Desire is treated in a very similar manner in the New Testament. And it's viewed as, as someone who just wants their life with Christ to be the best possible. Amen. Or as scripture would say, that we just want to please him. Amen. There's a desire that comes with that. That's very, very powerful. And so this morning, I'm going to focus on the dynamics of desire. I'm going to use the life of Jacob. I'm going to give you five illustrations from Jacob's life that speak about desire and how it can be relevant to us today and how we approach our living for God. Because right. I don't know about you, there's just not something in my life that says I'm just going to go along and whatever way takes me whatever way, that's where I'm going to end up. That's not what I desire. Right. I want my life to be what God wants it to be. Amen. I want my life to be an example of the will he has for my life. I want my desires to be I want them to be a copycat of his desires for I'm going to use five examples of the life of Jacob. The first one is in Genesis chapter 25. And um, verse 24, we'll start reading there. It says, And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, speaking about Rebekah, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. I want you to notice, notice right from the birth of Jacob. There is an element of desire that is portrayed. It's, it's unique that the scripture tells us that when Jacob is born, he's actually holding on to Esau's heel. The Lord thought it was significant enough to put in scripture that he was holding on to Esau's heel. See, actually, Jacob means to defraud or deceive. Yes, and we always hear the name or the word deceiver. Yes, but how that 
came to be and how that meaning is placed there, it comes from the idea to overthrow a person by tripping up his heels. Right. Now we think of Jacob and the name deceiver as a bad thing. He didn't give himself the name. <laughs> he was named Jacob by his parents. And it comes from the idea that he's trying to overthrow by tripping up a person's heels. That, that meaning, deceiver, comes from right from the beginning. There was something different about Jacob. It was like, let me out first. No, seriously. We can, we can prove that in a later one of the examples of his desire for the birthright. See, what happens is there's such a significance in being born first in Scripture. There is. And right from the beginning of Jacob's entrance into life, he had a unique desire. Now, I have to tell you this morning, everybody here is alive. Good. It's good. We talk about that, and I'm glad you are, actually. But there's something about a desire that's more than just about being alive. Jacob was already alive. He already had life. But he wanted life to be the more prominent. He wanted to be first. I'm not talking in the sense of, of a greed, or I'm not talking in the sense of, well, I, I'm going to step on someone to get ahead, or, or I'm, I'm not talking in the sense of, you know, whatever I have to do to make myself look better than someone else. That's not, that's not the desire I'm talking about. I'm talking about a longing. I'm talking about something deep inside that says I want life more than anything else. And he took a hold of the heel of Esau and said, I'm going to experience life. I want to know this morning, in the house of God, is it just about coming into his house? Is it just about attending church this morning? Or is there something that you want to take a hold of God Amen. and say, God, it's more. It's more than just the ordinary. It's more than just the status quo. It's more than just survival. It's more than just being alive. I want to be a prominent God. I want to be beyond the natural. I want to be beyond God. What the ordinary would be in someone's life. I want to have new life. Amen. I'm talking about a desire that put is put in your heart and you act upon uh, that supersedes what the world offers. Right. It supersedes the lust of the flesh. It supersedes the greed of money. It supersedes the necessity of relationship. It supersedes the prominence of position. It supersedes the degrees of education. Amen. I'm talking about a desire for the life that God gives that goes away beyond what this world gives. A desire that says, no matter what, Amen. I'm going to experience the life that God has for me. That's the type of desire I'm talking about. Amen. That beyond what has been. It's not based upon anybody else. Right. It's not based upon what people are doing around you. Amen. It's not based upon the worldly opportunity. Right. It's based upon above everything else in this world. Yes, sir. I want 
what God has for me. Amen. See, if you and I don't desire that, you won't receive it. He longs to give it to every person. He longs for you and I to have a, a greater act of life than we have ever experienced. Yes, sir. A newer life than we could ever imagine. A greater life than we could ever put into our thinking. He desires it. But it comes down to you and I. That says beyond everything else, I'm going to go after what God has for me. It's easy for us to focus on the negative things of Jacob's life. We could do that with every person here. Or we could focus on he had such a longing right from birth. Right. New life. To seize, it means the idea of holding in possession yes, sir. what's in store. Yes, sir. God, what is it that you have for every person yeah. that's in this building this morning? That's something we've never experienced before. But because we long after, we desire it, it will be fulfilled and it will be experienced because of the desire of the person. I'll take you to the second example in Genesis 25 and verse 29. This is now a little while after they, Jacob and Esau have been born. The scripture goes directly into verse 29, but time has passed, and there's been some growing up. And the Bible says, and Jacob saw a pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Right. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And as he sware unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. And thus Esau despised his birthright. The birthright was not just an ordinary event. It was the blessing of the inheritance of the family. When he said to Esau, swear to me this day, means to seven oneself. As if by repeating a declaration seven times. I want you to say it seven times. That you're giving me this birthright. See, Jacob understood the rank of brothers. He was born second. And the rank of brothers was he didn't own the birthright. Again, we could focus on his name as deceiver, but... Esau is, he's to the age that, that he understands what Jacob's doing. He's not trying to trick Esau. He says, listen, I'll give you this bowl of beans if you just give me your inheritance. Anyone in the right state of mind would not trade a bowl of beans for anything. Just saying. But Esau traded his whole inheritance for a bowl of beans. We could focus on that, or we could focus on the desire of Jacob that says, I am going to attain everything possible that my dad has for me. 
See, that's the part of Jacob that's beyond the ordinary. Well, you know, I'll just take the field that's behind the other field. And, and I'll just take the little barn and the well that doesn't have much water. I guess that's the one I'll get. Oh, the sheep that are the shaggy ones there, the ones that have no teeth. I'll get those <laughs> ones. Oh, no, no, that's not what he does. His whole mentality is based around, I'm going to give the best of what dad has for me. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm not interested in leftovers. I'm not interested in being a second class citizen. I'm not interested in what's left. To, uh, no, no, no. I want everything that dad has for me. Hear me this morning. Well, I, you know, I'm a Christian. And I'm, I'm, no, no, hold your head high. You're a child of the king. Hallelujah. You've been blood bought and you've been sealed with his spirit. You don't have to wait. Hallelujah. For the second class blessing. Amen. You know, on Sunday morning, I'll calm down a bit. <laughs> Why? Why do we have to take a back seat? A step backwards, hallelujah, to the enemy and to the world and say, no, oh, no, 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 no. What dad has for me, there's a desire down inside. I want everything possible. Take these silly beans and do whatever you want with them. I'm taking whatever God's got for me. There's a desire has to penetrate our minds and our thinking that you're not just going to settle. I wonder how many times God has more for his children. How many times God wants to bless and how many times God wants to give. And how many times God wants to pour out. And how many doors God wants to open. And how many times God wants to do the miraculous. But the longing or the desire of his people are not prevalent to what God has for you and I. And yet he finds a person that just says, you know what? If dad's got it, I want it. And it's not based upon how long they've been in the church. Not based upon the intellect. It's not based upon uh, uh, male or female. It's not based upon where they live. It's not based upon what language they speak. Uh, it's, not, it's just based upon someone with desire. God says there's a longing from that person. That wants everything that they can have. And they're going to get it. How often do we give up? Stop. It's not worth it. Too much work. Oh, I can tell you that Jacob knew exactly. He knew exactly the rank of his brother. And he says, I'm going to get what I've always wanted from the beginning. And that is the best of dad. The third is in Genesis 27. I'll read verse 6. And Rebecca spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison. And make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. What's happening is Isaac's getting old and he's getting ready to die and he's going to pass on. He doesn't know the agreement that's been made between Jacob and Esau over the birthright. And mom hears that dad's going to get ready to pass on the blessing. And so she lets Jacob in on the in on the story and says, "Listen, Dad, Dad's asking for some venison, and 
I think he's going to pass out the blessing. Now listen, we can focus again on, oh, you know, kids should have been treated the same. We can focus on all that. That's possible. There's a different lesson, different message for all of that. But I want you to see the desire that's deep inside of these individuals. And so verse 19. It says, And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau thy firstborn. He liked him. I have done according as thou badest me arise. I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison. It wasn't really venison. It was goats. That thy soul may bless me. The desire of the new life and the desire of the birthright. And now he's wanting the desire of the blessing of death. The affirmation. He's wanting, he's wanting dad to, to make sure that there's an adoration that comes from him in this blessing. That I'm going to do everything possible. I'm going to make goats taste like deer. And I'm going to take the hides of those goats and I'm going to put them on my arms and hands so that when dad rubs his hand on my hands, he's going to think I'm Esau because I'm hairy. That's exactly what he did. Isaac is, he's dim of eyes and he says, you feel like Esau. Smell like he's gone. You sound like Jacob. <laughs> but in the process of all that, look at the desire of what Jacob had. I, I, well, you know what he's saying, Pastor, we gotta lie, steal, and deceive to get no 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 no. Jacob had something down inside of him that wanted the blessing of God. <coughs> now I ask you this morning, how big a desire is inside of each of us to please God, to have the blessing of God, right. to desire the gifts of how, how big a desire is within us this morning to have a move of his spirit Amen. in our life. Amen. And to be full of the presence Amen. of God. Amen. And allow our life to be the example that he wants us to be. Amen. What's the desire inside of us to, to be used of God and to be available for God. And, and to allow God to, to use our life for his kingdom and the expansion of his kingdom. And to show forth his grace and his mercy and his love and his compassion. I'm talking about a desire that goes beyond anything else in this world. It says, you know what? I'm going to be everything that God wants me yeah. to be. I desire, I long after the blessing of God. Amen. I could put it to you this way. What's your desire this morning to hear the words? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Where's your desire lie for that Amen. to be spoken to you? Amen. Is it, well, that would be nice. That'd be a cool thought. No, 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 no. No, no, no. When I walk into his presence, there's nothing else that I want to hear. There's nothing else I want to see. There's nothing else that's going to take the attention away from the words that you and I want to hear as our heavenly Father yeah. speaks into you that day. Well, how good and faithful 
servant. See, it's not just a cute little phrase that you would text someone or not followed by what those things call emojis or something. <laughs> I only think I don't use any of that kind of stuff. I I have to try to figure out what people are saying when they send me those things. <laughs> someone with a side eye and I I I have to ask my wife, what what's this what's this mean? No, no, no. He's not going to tell you with an emoji or whatever you say, however you say. You're not going to have to try to figure it out. Right. The only thing that you want to hear. Amen. Well done. Amen. What's your desire this morning? Yes. To please God. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Because Jacob went into the presence of his father. With only one plan. And that is, I'm going to receive yes. this blessing. Huh. If I have to take deer meat and make it taste like goat, goat meat and make it taste like deer meat, I have to let on on the hair. But I'm going to get the blessing. Number three. Number four, Genesis 29. Genesis 29, verse 15. It says, And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed unto him but a few days. Just a few days. For the love he had to her. Now, the fourth example I want to show you is the desire he had for Rachel. That he was willing to work seven years. I just want you to think about that for a second. The Bible doesn't tell us they dated in the meantime. Not none of that stuff. Just for the chance. Now I can guarantee you. Jacob's not. He's not stupid. He understands the position. Of how things are done. He just went through that a number of years ago. With his brother. Brother's older. He's got the birthright. He understands that Leah is supposed to be married first. Now, I, I, I could spend some time. He's not stupid, and yet he is stupid. You know, waking up and, you know, not realizing it was her. That's, that's kind of a unique setting. The fact of the matter is, his desire for this woman, he was willing to set aside seven years of his life to work for her. And even after that immediately didn't work out, he said, I will work seven more to get the one I love. How is that? How is that with our serving God? Well, you know what? I don't know. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this for a period of time until God does it. And if He doesn't, that's it. There's people that talk that way. You know what? If God doesn't answer this prayer by a certain date, I'm done. 
No, no, seriously, there's people who talk that way. I don't understand what I've done wrong to be so mistreated by God. Is it that way, or is your desire so strong to serve Him because you love Him so much that even when things don't go your way, you just say, you guess what? I'm going to do this all over again. Because something's down inside of me that has a desire that's greater than just the status quo. Ah, uh, God, I love you more. This ain't going to stop me, God. What just happened isn't going to make me quit. This isn't going to change my direction. This isn't going to change my perspective. This isn't going to change my priority, God. There's something inside of me that I desire you more than anything because I love you. There's something about desire that goes deeper than my feelings. Hear me this morning. There's something about desire is greater than me just being appeased. There's something greater with my desire than me just getting my want. No, my desire is based upon I love you. Amen. And no matter what happens, I'm going to still love you. Right, right. And folks, that's a desire that's not based upon your circumstances. Right. It's not based upon what happened yesterday or what may happen tomorrow. No, no, you got your mind made up because your desire is greater than your circumstances. Your desire is greater than your health. Your desire is greater than what's happening in this world. Your desire is based upon your love for him. And you will serve him until. Have you ever thought about how you would respond if you ended up with the wrong woman? <laughs> oh, well, someone had to marry him. <laughs> I heard an instance one time and uh, the mother of a daughter, there, she was kind of doing some crazy things. And she had kind of connected with someone that mom didn't think was you know, the best for her life, but she was making stupid decisions too. And the mother just said, well, there's no sense of ruining two families. They might as well get married. <laughs> really? Is that how we approach it? So... Mom didn't think her daughter was doing great. And the guy she was going to marry wasn't great. No sense of ruining two families. Let's make it work. Okay. Just think about how you would respond if you ended up with the wrong woman. Oh, well. Those are the breaks. No. See, this is, it's so relevant to our walk with God. But I, you know what? I prayed and it didn't happen. Oh, well. No. I'm going to pray yes. until it happens. Yes. Well, I haven't seen an answer yet. Well, I guess it must not be going to happen. No. No, see, it's, it's about your desire. Right. Yeah. I'm going to keep praying. Keep praying. I'm going to keep seeking. I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep reaching. I'm going to keep stretching. I'm going to keep worshiping. I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to keep praying and witnessing. I'm going to keep. It's about desire of your walk with God. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to stop just because. Okay, last example. 
Genesis 32. We'll read from verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day break of him. He said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob, deceiver. Someone who overthrows people by tripping up their heels. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. Well, this is a name change. This is a big name change. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou ask, does after, ask after my name? And he blessed him there. Man, I don't even know. This is not a finger bite or a thumb wrestling match. This is not a five-minute deal where, you know what, that was kind of neat and cool. We're all tired of it now. Let's just take a break. No, no. He wrestled with him all night, and he was not going to let him go. Now, we understand, listen, the angel could have took care of him in a second. There's no issue there. He could have actually put Jacob down and pinned him. <laughs> they would have been over. But that's not what God allowed. God allowed himself to wrestle with Jacob because he's seen Jacob's Desire was so great. You know what, Jacob? Why don't you let me go? It's just a little tease. Just let me go. Let you go. Not a chance. I'm not letting you go. Not until you bless me. But it's been an hour, Jacob. It's been two. Too bad. I'm not letting you go. I've got you in a headlock. Got you in an ankle lock. I've got you pinned. I've got you. I'm holding you. I've got your arm behind your back, and you're going to say uncle. <laughs> now that's see, that's the mentality that Jacob had. Uh uh, you can't go until you bless me. And I love what is that? He knows his name. He's not asking him something he doesn't already know. He knows his name is Jacob. I mean, this is, this is the power of God wrestling with him. He knows who he's wrestling with. He, he wanted him to say it. What's your name? Jacob. Jacob, you defrauder, <laughs> you deceiver, you, you tripper of heels. All the way from birth you've been doing this. No more. I'm changing your name. I'm changing. I've watched your desire from the day you were born. And I'm changing your name. To Israel. Music come. Huh. See, this is what every child of God is after. I've got a hold of you, God, and I'm not letting go until everything's changed. My life is changed. My name is changed. My eternal destination is, is set. I, I'm going I'm to stay a hold of you, God. Because the desire inside of me is I'm going to win. I'm going to make it. I'm going to get over. I'm going to get through. I'm going to make up. And, 
and to the other side. I'm going to see the miraculous. I'm going to see my family. I'm going to see my spouse. I'm do you see what I'm saying this morning? God wants to know if you're going to prevail. Yeah. Oh, Pastor, it's so hard at times. I, I'm sure it is. About the third or the fourth hour of the wrestling match, I'm sure Jacob was tired. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. But there is no way that I'm giving up, that I'm going to pack it in, that I'm going to stop until I prevail. I may have told you this before, but me and my dad got in a wrestling match one time. I was about 11 or 12. I love to wrestle. I love my dad. And my dad had his arms around me. He was squeezing. And he said, do you give? I said, no. You have to know, my dad's a good-sized man. He squeezed a little harder. He said, do you give? I said, no. <laughs> the third time my dad said, do you give? I didn't answer. <laughs> he had knocked me right out. The next thing I knew, my head was underneath the tab. I was trying to get me to come. I'll never forget. You talk about stubborn. What is your stubbornness like when it comes to God? What is it? Oh, you know what? I've been fighting this journey for 10 years. That's, that's it. That's long enough. No, 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 no. Don't stop now. It's just about morning. Don't quit now. The sun's just about to break. Don't give up now. It's just about to start the rising of a new day. And you could just about be at the moment because of your desire. Words are spoken. I'm changing the situation. I'm changing the circumstances. I'm changing what it looks like. Thou hast prevailed. So in the in the church this morning, and I no, I really don't apologize for preaching longer, but I did preach longer than normal. But I've come. I'm coming to the service this morning because God's laid into my spirit. And every person here today, what is going to happen and how it's going to happen and when it's going to happen is all going to come down to your desire. Don't give up. Reach out for new life. Get everything God has for you. Amen. Expect his blessing. Serve him no law, no matter how long it takes. Amen. And wrestle until you prevail. Would you stand this morning? The dynamics of desire. Oh, God, Thank you, Jesus. that every person in here this morning, give them, God, a second wind, an extra determination. Thank you, Jesus. Renew their vigor, God. Thank you, Jesus. Replenish them with energy. Overflowing of your presence and spirit this morning. And the dynamics of their desire just go to another new level. That they will get to see and experience everything that you have for them. 
everything that's happening in their life right now. God, you're just wanting to see if there's a passion and a determination and a fervency, God, of their prayer this morning. You just want to know if it's the most important thing in every one of our lives. I pray, Jesus, that your power and your presence and your blessing would be upon each person that's in this place right now. Thank you, Jesus. I open the altar this morning, church. I open the altar to every person to come. Would you just check your desire? Are you looking for new life more than anything? Are you looking for the inheritance God has for you above everything else? Are you just wanting to please Him and receive every blessing possible from Him? Are you wanting to serve Him however long? No matter what length of time it is, you're going to serve Him to receive the best. Because you love Him more than anything. And are you going to endure? And are you going to fight the good fight of faith? Are you going to run this race to the best of your ability? You're going to keep the faith. You're going to prevail. You're going to go until everything changes from what it was before. Can I hear that determination in your voice as you reach out and pray this morning? As you call up to God this morning, 